What's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Um, I do these every week. Today is June 30th, 2018. It is the last weekend in June. Next week starts a fresh month, fresh week. We got NFP and CAD employment reports on Friday. Um, pretty big event, at least the second half of the week. We got some big events going on. Um, anyone that hasn't watched these before, thank you for tuning in. I do these videos every week. I go over what's going on in the uh, forex markets I'll go over all the major indexes the dollar index euro Japanese yen pound CAD Swiss franc New Zealand Aussie I'll go over the dollar and I mean I go over the S&P 500 US um, equity market index I go over gold I go over oil I go over all the US dollar crosses and then I go over my watch list from all the other cross currency pairs so I basically dive into the charts it's about a half hour of pure technical analysis going over everything that I'm seeing on the charts, how I'm building my watch list, and what I'm looking for from each individual pair for the week ahead. So um, if you haven't tuned in, thank you for coming in. If you've seen these videos before, I appreciate you checking back. I appreciate you staying loyal and supporting these videos. Throw any comments below if you guys want to see anything differently, if you guys want me to cover anything in particular, or if you have any comments to share. Um, I love hearing feedback, good or bad. So thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts here. Make sure you check out your monthly candle closes. It's a new month starting on Monday. The month has ended. That means our monthly candles have closed. Check them out. Quickly run through your charts. See what they're looking like. See if anything jumps out at you. See if there's anything you can add to your analysis to help your probability. But thank you guys. I appreciate you tuning into the video. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts. I'll see you in there. Alrighty, so hopping into the charts here, starting with the US dollar index. This is a chart that shows the overall performance of the US dollar in a basket of index, in a basket versus other currencies. Um, basically, what we're seeing here on the dollar is, as you guys already know, all through 17, we were in a downtrend. We came down, bottomed out here in the early 2018, had this bearish wedge or pennant pattern forming here. Looked like we could have continued to the downside. But we did in fact reverse trend we broke out broke the 200 day moving average um, just really ripped higher said new highs we pulled back a couple weeks ago and we pushed back again and right now we are at an interesting level here with the dollar um, if i had one outlook one word to put on my outlook for the dollar right now it would be cautious probably um, so we're in this uptrend now we're setting higher highs higher lows but if you look closely here We've got some divergence going on between RSI and um, the price action, right? So we've got higher highs being made by the price action here, and then we've got lower highs being made on the indicator, right, on our RSI divergence tool. Um, so this is this is divergence. This is momentum disagreeing with price action, and this is showing us, you know, there could be a bearish reversal. On top of that, we have a rising wedge. In an uptrend, a rising wedge is a reversal pattern. So when you see price consolidating from the tops and bottoms, but it's slowly rising, that is a sign that there could be a reversal imminent. Also, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we formed an evening star reversal pattern, right? So we got this big bearish engulfing, this little spinning top doji up top here, and then this bullish candle before it. So the buyers pushed price up, there was balance in decision between the two, and then sellers came in, won the battle, pushed it down. We didn't break this prior high at this 95.50 level, and it's right around, uh, you know, <clears throat> this resistance here from the past on 95.50. Price tried to break out, hit this roof again, and sold off. So I'm not saying I'm completely bearish on the dollar. I'm not saying, you know, I wouldn't be looking for longs. I'm not saying I am looking for shorts. All I'm saying is there's some interesting price action going on right now, and until we have confirmation of you know a break of this pattern, I don't really have any clear set direction. We are in an uptrend. We do have some bullish momentum from this trend reversal. However, we are seeing some um, bearish signs, some reversal pressure. So I do have to wait to see. I'm not hopping in on dollar cross pairs in any one direction until I get better feel of what's coming in the next couple weeks. Going on to the euro now, uh, as you guys know, these charts are very similarly looking, just flipped upside down. They're inverted, so the euro dollar is a very heavily traded pair. Um, they are may really make up for about sixty percent of the transactions at forex. But what you see on one, you're typically going to see the opposite on the other. However, this is telling us a little bit of a different story. Um, we have a descending triangle here 
after this bearish move, after this bull trend reversal, right? So we've got a support holding here one time, two times, three times, and we've got lower highs closing down, right? So um, price is moving lower high, lower high, lower high, and this is a trend continuation pattern. A descending triangle and a downtrend shows us that if price breaks the support, that's a good sign that the trend's going to continue lower. So we're now back up to around this trend line. So price could easily break out of this, you know, turn this into a triple bottom maybe and break out and reverse. But uh, probability tells us and trend direction trading tells us we want to be looking for breaks to the downside. So that's what initially my, my viewpoint is on the euro, watching for the support to break at 111 strong psychological support level. And uh, obviously we have to be ready to change our analysis if it breaks this trend to the upside and reverses. However, that is something we want to be watching for. Yen. Um, so we were in this strong downtrend uh, back into this large trading range. Uh, we've, we temporarily broke out, but then it immediately reversed back in. And we were moving down, making lower lows, lower highs. We pulled back here, kind of broke structure. Um, looked like we were going to reverse trend possibly, but then came back down to the downside. Uh, got a little rally again, tapped 50 SMA. All the moving averages are clustered here. That shows we've been range bound. You know, they're all kind of just crisscrossing each other and flat here. However, we did just break this daily trend line with this red line you can see here with this small little doji candle on Friday. That broke and closed below the support and trend line. So we could see this sell off. We could see the yen weakness return. A lot of this will depend on the equity markets. As I go over with you guys, I'll cover the S&P 500 chart in a minute. But equity markets have a big influence on the yen with that risk on risk off trade. When the markets are doing good, um, people usually take their money out of safe haven things like the yen and gold, for example, and put them into higher return investments, right? So when the markets are doing good, people are more confident. They want their money into more um, high risk, high reward investments. So they go to stock markets, they go to more developed, more of the faster growth developing nations like the Aussie, New Zealand, CAD, um, commodity type currencies. They go to just higher risk investments. Japanese yen is seen as a low risk safe haven. It's, it's where you put your money when you're scared and when things are going crazy in the world and you want to make sure that it holds its value. Uh, so when the stock markets are crashing, people typically take their money out of the markets, out of their riskier assets, put it into the yen. So that is why we want to watch the equity markets very close to the end and that dictates a lot of this but we could see this yen push to the downside now as you can see this little um, pennant or wedge right here just got broken out of and it broke this daily trend line so that's something we want to keep an eye on with the yen but initially I do think we have some downside possibility pound we are still moving lower with the pound um, we had this strong sell-off off those highs we've been setting lower lows and lower highs since this week we set a new lower low we are pulling back so maybe around this 129 level could be a good opportunity to look to catch that next leg lower. Um, but all in all, we are still in a downtrend with the pound. You know, price is setting lower lows, lower highs. 20s below the 50s, below the 200. We had that death cross, 50 cross and below the 200. Bearish sign. Um, so all in all, we are keeping our eyes to the downside of the pound. But again, we have to keep our options open. CAD. Um, this is one of my favorites for this week. So we had this strong breakout last week below here. We kind of based down here on support. And then this past Thursday, Friday, oil, oil really was killing it. And oil shot kept the cat up, right? OPEC meeting, meetings on Friday, um, oil just ripped higher, a lot, a lot higher this week. So um, we're back at around $75 a barrel, almost there. So oil got, I mean, oil prices pushed the Canadian dollar up. So oil and CAD are very closely related. The, the Canadian economy is a very oil driven economy. It makes up a lot of their, uh, you know, transactions and economy is done through the exporting of oil. So they are very dependent on oil and the price of oil affects their economy drastically. So that being said, the Canadian dollar supply and demand, depending on the oil's price, um, and people you know, value the, the CAD versus the oil. So when they see something going on in oil, they react with the CAD. So oil pushed it higher. However, on Friday, we also saw poor CP, CPI numbers out of Canada. So this is their inflation numbers, their consumer price index numbers. These are numbers that our central banks are watching extremely closely right now, and they missed expectations on Friday. Markets shrugged it off, markets blew higher, um, riding that oil strength. 
I think oil could correct a little bit this week. I think the markets could settle in and realize, and that CPI number could start weighing onto the CAD more. I think we have a beautiful lower low, rallying up to set a lower high. Mean reversion, right? We were pretty far extended from the moving averages. We've reverted back to moving averages, back to structure. Broken, retested weekly trend line, as you can see in blue here. And I think up around this 75.50 area is a great opportunity to look for shorts. So CAD, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I will be looking for short opportunities. Um, there's a lot of potential in some CAD crosses, so that is definitely a pair I'll be watching. Uh, again, this could either just start tanking Sunday, Monday, or it could blow higher and rip right through that resistance. So um, we have to have our options open, but that is the game plan going into the week that I think CAD is going to rally up to that zone and then sell off. Swiss franc, uh, kind of just been range bound within this bearish wedge pennant pattern. You know, we've been in this very strong downtrend, setting lower lows and lower highs. We had this extremely strong push lower. Then we've had a you know multiple week rally, hit the 50 SMA around 95.50 level resistance, and has slowly been selling off again. Um, we're kind of just consolidating in here now, so I will be waiting for a break either way before I have too clear of an idea where this is going. But I do still think we've got bearish pressure on. Swiss franc, and I do still think that's where we have to aim our, um, you know, thought process and uh, targets to start this. Then after that, we have our Australian dollar. Australian dollar is another interesting one. We've been in a downtrend, lower lows, lower highs. We had a bull flag pattern, broke out of it, and we've kind of just been chopping around down here on support since. If you look left, we've got a nice, uh, strong demand zone here that we're sitting on. And it's also a nice support resistance level. If you look all the way left, the 73.50 has really been an interesting level in the past. So um, this is a pair I definitely want to keep an eye on. We do have some divergence, right? We're getting higher high, I mean, uh, higher peak troughs here, higher lows right here, and lower lows here. So price and RSI are disagreeing. They're diverging. This is a reversal indicator. I do think we could see a bit of a rally in the Aussie, uh, especially if we see some risk on return to the markets. That would that would calls that weak yen strong Aussie could be a great um, Aussie yen long opportunity if you paired those two against each other just based off relative strength and weakness however um, I do think that we could get a little bit of a correction in the Aussie I am still bearish though overall with the Australian dollar as we are in a downtrend setting lower lows lower highs I'm not looking to catch reversals I'm just trying to catch the impulse legs lower so I'm going to identify this corrective phase when it could be over and then catch that next leg down to the downside all right, so next we have the New Zealand dollar. Um, this is a very, very interesting pair and chart right now. As you guys know, I've been talking about this pair for a while. This big trading range we're in here on the weekly chart. Here we go, this, this will make it easier to see. So we've got this um, weekly chart here, right? And we've got this strong range. We're in between all 2017 and 2018. So we've got this strong range and we've been, we saw the support right here at around, um, let's see where it is. Let's just say around 67, 80, um, 68. So we've got this very strong support here. Bounced off at one time, bounced off at two times, bounced off at three times. If you look back, it was resistance. It was resistance. Very strong level. We had a range between this 75 and this support. And I told you guys that we were selling off here, and it looked like we had some momentum that we could be breaking out of this range, breaking out of the support. And if you guys see on here, this weekly candle is a big bearish, uh, strong bearish momentum candle. It came all the way down and closed below the support. If you look left, this is a very strong sign. Um, this shows me that I do want to be bearish New Zealand dollar. I think we could see a strong move to the downside down to definitely the lows down here. If you break out of a range, you can typically take a one to one move of the pattern and extend that to the downside and that could be your target for when that range breaks out so we're breaking out of this range expect a one-to-one -one move about 500 pips or so down to you know somewhere in the middle of 600 and 650 so um, definitely looking for some bearish pressure here taking it to the daily you can see more closely um, this 68 level here was that support and as you can see Wednesday Thursday we busted below it closed Friday we rallied a little bit but I think we'll, you know I think we'll get a little bit of a pullback here come back up to retest this resistance but I do think the New Zealand dollar can be a great short opportunity in the coming future and it, this is a range that we've been waiting for it to break out of for a while now and it finally broke so definitely something we want to keep an eye on gold remains the same still falling off um, 
still just looking for opportunities to, you know, sell into the downtrend. So if you look here, what we want to see is we want to see a correction like this, maybe up to 120. Maybe we correct all the way up to 121. And then we want to see it find some resistance. Look for shorting opportunities to ride it lower, right? So that's ideally the general gist of how you want to trade a downtrend on pullbacks. And in gold, you know, we set this strong downtrend now, selling off strong. So we want to try to um, sell any rallies, right? Short into any rallies. Any rally in price, we find resistance, sell it, ride it down to the downside. So that's what the story with gold. Equity markets, a uh, little bit of a mixed picture. I do think we'll see some more bullishness. One thing I worry about is the looks of this potentially forming. That could be, you know, not that it's the end of the world, but that could be um, a catalyst for some bearishness out of this equity markets in the U.S. This is the S&P 500 chart. So um, we have been pretty choppy. Price is, you know, rallying and then selling off and then it's rallying and then it's selling off and we're not really getting anywhere. So we're just bouncing between price points. Um, so I, I can't really say one way or the other if this is for sure going to continue or reverse. Um, all we can do is look at what we have, and we are still moving higher. You know, the 20 is still above the 50, above the 200. This 200-day moving average, if I take this trend line away, has really been support that's been holding this price action up, right? Every time we get these strong sell-offs, it tings off the 200 and rallies. Bounces off it, rallies, bounces, rallies, bounces, rallies, bounces, rallies, bounces, rallies. So we could sell off and hit it again, and maybe that could be another um, point where price bounces and rallies. Or we maybe push higher now, or we reverse and break through that. But either way, this this chart is definitely what we want to be watching for that risk on, risk off theme in the markets that is very correlated to Forex. And, um, you know, this is, this is not really the best point of price action or telling us for sure what price could do next, but, you know, we do have higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, retesting the higher low. Could see this now push higher. Over like I was showing you guys, that's, this could be a right shoulder for me. We could see a sell off. But um, all in all, we, we do want to keep an eye on this pair. And we are still in an uptrend, so I am still looking to the upside. But if we see anything showing us that is not the case, then we'll react. Oil, as you guys can see, this is that rip higher. We did break up and above that um, resistance at 72 so I do think overall oil is bullish but um, you know after a parabolic move like that you typically get some form of a retracement throw Fibonacci out there we've got a 382 down in here 50 would be a nice one because it's got a lot of support resistance levels on it um, even 618 it could retrace too I do think we see a retracement in oil um, keep an eye on it but that is where my initial thoughts are right now a little bit of a retracement and then it continues to the upside Alrighty, so going over the dollar crosses and my watch list for the week. Starting with the Euro US dollar. Uh, again, this is you know very, very popular pair. Makes up for over half the transactions in the Forex markets. Um, but it's a tough pair to trade at the same time. So what I'm watching here is, as you guys can see with the drawing, we've got a descending triangle. We've got one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch pretty much to this descending trend line. And support has held once twice, three times, four times. It's been support in the past. Nice little demand zone. Um, price is holding off on this. Every time we hit it, we bounce, but it's also holding on this upward trend line. This is a bearish continuation pattern, right? We have a descending top, support holding. This shows that price is more likely than not to break lower. Could very easily reverse break the upside, but we are looking for a break lower. So you could either be playing this for shorts up here you know, shorts off this trend line, get a good risk to reward, maybe take some profits off when we get to the bottom of the pattern just in case it doesn't break out. Or you can trade the breakout of this pattern. Or you can even trade the breakout, retest, and then short it. A um, number of different ways to play this, but all in all, I am looking to the downside in the euro. I am looking for that to continue to slide, but that is assuming that the dollar continues to push higher. So if the dollar gets crushed, if this morning star pattern, that's an evening star on the dollar, plays out and this breaks the pattern and reverses that is what we would see if the dollar sells off all right so pound to dollar um, not my favorite price action right now um, we are setting lower lows and lower highs but we're not really doing it in like a nice clean structured trend we're kind of just like slowly falling off um, what's looking like could start being a descending triangle uh, descending wedge 
in a downtrend that is a descending in a downtrend that is a reversal pattern right so if it's a descending triangle in an uptrend that's a good sign bullish trends correcting gonna you know continue the trend most likely this is a descending triangle after a strong move to the downside and downtrend so it's not really the best pattern that doesn't say price could price might not just continue selling off because it very easily could you know we've got a beautiful looking downtrend as far as moving averages go we got the 20 downward below the 50 that's downward that's cr just crossed the 200 which is now sloping downward as well so this is definitely something that we want to um, you know keep an eye on and be aware of and shorts could be in play but uh, just not you know we have plenty of pairs to pick from I'm not gonna chase and try to make a pair of perfect setup that's not um, I'm gonna wait for the perfect setups and pound all these pound dollars just not the perfect setup right now so it's just gonna be on the back burners for right now dollar CAD I do love this setup um, this chart looks a little busy but we've got this weekly trend line that was broken a couple weeks ago in black here is just a temporary daily trend line red here is our more long-term daily trend line um, we've got this red box here showing this broken resistance now could act as support we've got beautiful moving averages 20 above the 50 above the 200 all sloping upwards price made this beautiful higher high price got overextended and sold off corrected back to the mean again this is oil driving price the CAD higher um, but now we are coming up to the support to this daily trend line and I do think that the CAD will remain weak this week that is my opinion could change um, so I, I, I wouldn't just buy after this strong bearish momentum I definitely have to wait and see how Sunday Monday price acts hopefully one of the two days we can get some kind of like uh, you know hammer candle or something off this support to show us that price is holding then we start looking for long opportunities but uh, dollar CAD definitely something I like shorting off of this 131 bounce and trying to catch that next leg higher dollar yen um, not too much going on but you know we were in a little bit of a bull pennant pattern uh, broke this counter trend line here with this push higher it is struggling to break this resistance um, 111 here if you look on the four hour you can see that break a little better right it broke that counter trend line there started to push higher um, but hit this resistance and it's kind of struggling to break it so we'll have to see what this pair looks like this start this week but again another one where bullish pressure is where we've got to be looking we have essentially been setting higher highs and higher lows um, 20 is above the 50 about to cross the 200 prices above all three moving averages we're in an uptrend we just have to wait to see if we get the right setup dollar Swiss um, that 1.0 you know parity whole number level is still holding as resistance we thought we were breaking out of it here a few weeks ago a couple months ago pulled back rallied again rejected off the dollar rallied again rejected off the dollar level so we are um, still holding on this resistance we had a nice evening star pattern formation here on Friday Thursday into Wednesday um, so a little bit of a reversal pattern off that resistance definitely could see a sell-off in the dollar Swiss franc another one of those charts where I'm just not seeing clean enough price action I'm not excited enough about this chart that it's not on my watch list it's not something I will be keeping an eye on for setups but still gonna throw the analysis out there and still keep an eye on it Aussie dollar this could be a nice short opportunity um, you know we broke out of this bear flag made a strong move to the downside we've hit this weekly support twice now and they're bouncing off it we did break lower off this one so we could bounce up to around the 7450 area and you know could show us some kind of reversal sign that this resistance area is holding and try to get short for the next leg lower um, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that beautiful downtrend though as far as structure moving average and all go so definitely want to be looking for shorts if anything but that's what I'll be looking for a little bit of a rally to then get short on the next move lower New Zealand dollar US dollar this is definitely a chart that I'm for sure watching this week you guys can see how strong that weekly level is if you look left here uh, we did break and close below it I think we'll rally back up to it and then this is where I'll be looking to short it so once we get that rally back up to that broken level I'll be looking to um, short it and try to catch that ride to the downside I think there's a lot of bearishness to come out of this pair um, so I'll be watching it for shorts and I'll be keeping you guys updated but that is where my initial analysis is gonna be all right so this takes us on to our watch list starting with the watch list we've got New Zealand dollar Japanese yen again I'm playing this New Zealand dollar short I think that it broke out of that very strong level 
Um, I do want to see some corrections out of the pair though for the first half this week, so I'm not chasing this falling price action. I want to wait for it to rally up to a better price point and then get in. So I'm looking for a rally in New Zealand yen up to around 75, 76 area. Looking for shorting opportunities there to catch it to the downside. Um, CAD yen, I'm also watching. A little bit of Elliott wave here. It's messy, but um, we had a one, two, three, four, five ABC corrective. Now we had a one, two, three, four. Could be onto this fifth wave to the downside now, right? So if I get these out of the way, basic, basic, basic uh, Elliott wave analysis. But taking this regular price action, we have been setting a lower low that broke structure here, set lower low, lower high, continued with that, set another lower low. We're now setting a lower high again. This could be a nice area to look for a short. If you look left, there's other resistance, support resistance points there. Um, so looking for a shorting opportunity here with CAD yen. Again, that's playing CAD weakness. Um, but I'll be looking to short it. We're on this 50 SMA area here. <clears throat> Got a nice little reversal or some kind of resistance found here on 84.50. And then look for shorting opportunities to catch that trade to the downside. Swiss franc. <clears throat> This has another interesting setup going on. We got a nice inverse head and shoulders. On this 112 resistance psychological number here, we have a very strong resistance. So looking to play a break of this would be nice. You could play the breakout here, or you could play the pullback to retest on the breakout, catch that long. Head and shoulders pattern. Um, distance from the neckline to the head is going to be your target. So if price breaks that neckline, target would be around there, 115, 500. Um, Really, just trying to catch some money um, as we make our way up there, right? Catch some money on all these flows with price action moving. Uh, catch some trades off this initial break, initial pullback. But all in all, we could see this inverse head and shoulders pattern play out. We could see this plan. That we're starting to see some bullish momentum starting to come into this pair. So 112 is definitely the spot to watch. Break of that to the upside would definitely be a good opportunity to look for trades. Pound yen, still moving down in this downtrend. You know, we set this lower low, came back up. We were, I was calling for shorts in here. We caught the shorts down, didn't quite go all the way. Rallied up, then found resistance, came back down, found support again, came back up, hitting resistance again. So this is back on the trend line. It's back on a Fibonacci level. I do think this is a good opportunity to look for finding resistance. I'm, again, this is a very strong bullish engulfing candle, very strong momentum candle. Uh, you could say t kind of an evening, a morning star formation, not typically, but... Um, we also have this strong hammer doji candle down here. So I'm not going to jump into a short right away. That would be selling against bullish pressure. It's not something we're in the business of doing here. However, I will now be looking for price to find resistance, show rejection off this level again, and show that maybe the bears are ready to step in and push this to the downside. Pound Aussie. Um, short is still valid. It's been a really, really stubborn pair trying to get it to break out. Um, on the four hour, you saw this triple top. Broke out, pulled back, broke out, pulled back, broke out, ranged, broke out, pulled back. Um, so this initial analysis, this initial trade is still valid. We are still good for a short, um, especially off this dollar chart. You know, we had this lower low, pulled back, hit this 50 SMA, strong resistance level within this newly formed downtrend, um, bearish engulfing, counter trend line broke, you name it, the signs are there. So it's all about just patience at this point, waiting for this thing to fall over and trying to be in it at the right time when it does. So GA, looking for short still on pound Aussie. Um, another interesting pair is Euro pound. We've been, you know, nothing really going on with this pair for a while. I haven't even looked at a trade on this pair in I don't even know how many months. Um, but we're starting to see something interesting here. This range is finally starting to get broken out of. As you can see, we've got the moving average is starting to slope. 200 got broken, price broke above the 200. So we are starting to see some um, signs of life. Breaking out of this range, we could expect a one-to-one -one move of the range. So that would be the initial target. This Friday um, doji candle, really I didn't like this strong upper pin bar wick. It showed that that breakout failed essentially. So um, this could very easily just reverse back into this range. However, I will be looking for it to um, push higher. I wanna see some follow through here. I want to see this be a legitimate breakout, see some follow through, and then maybe the start of a new trend. You know, we get a push higher, we pull back, we look for a short, a long opportunity to catch that next wave higher. The beginnings of trends are very strong. It's a 
a good time to get into them so we want to look for the earliest phase possible to enter a trend and try to ride it so this pair is not the best looking setup definitely not uh, anything to get too excited about but something I do want to be watching because if it breaks out of this range it could be some strong momentum pushes and some strong trades to catch off the bat with that next we have Eurocad we reverse this downtrend again broke this uh, counter trend this uh, daily downtrend line uh, broke the 50 SMA 20 SMA crossed above 200 or above all three moving averages set a higher high three day sell off to set a higher low on a very strong support level so I'll now be looking for long opportunities with this uh, euro CAD look for it to find support here and look for long opportunities to get up to try to catch that next push higher um, you know that's what we do in uptrends we look for rallies we buy into them try to catch that higher downtrends we look for um, we look for corrections and uptrends we look for rallies and downtrend price sets a lower low rallies back up retest structure retest support resistance try to catch that to the downside so that's what we're looking for here on the euro cad and then we've got the cad swiss franc this is one of my favorite pairs going into this week so we've been in a downtrend right lower low lower high lower low lower high this week we did have a strong rally that strengthened the cad um, we came up to this very strong resistance level if you look left structure support lower low lower high broke it set a lower low now lower high is retesting this support level which was the prior lower high beautiful structure when you talk about market structure that's what we want to see happening it's on the 618 Fibonacci level a good retracement point for price to continue a strong trend and we saw a big doji candle form here so I'm looking for signs to enter short catch this next wave to the downside and see if we can um, you know, ride this CAD weakness if we get it coming to the markets ride that CAD weakness to the downside and try to catch this um, that pretty much does it for this week guys what I'm watching what I got my eyes on I'll definitely be keeping things up to date on my Instagram core.fx um, but this looks like it could be a good trading week coming up it's the first month of the week so make sure everybody go over your monthly charts this just ended the month of June this weekend starting on Monday we have a new month the month of July all our monthly candles closed just take a peek at each of your charts monthly candle close see what it looks like see if we have any key level break and closes see if we have any strong candlestick reversal patterns or um, continuation patterns or anything like that just breeze through your monthly charts you don't have to spend two days doing it just spend a half hour 45 minutes look through your monthly charts see if anything jumps out at you see if there's anything you can help in your analysis to help build into your uh, watch lists and into your analysis with that monthly candle close we have NFP next week non-farm payrolls US job markets report out of the US released the first Friday of every month CAD also has their employment report so busy week next week heavily weighed to the end of the week but there's also some stuff going on throughout the week and as you guys know with everything going on with Trump and trade wars and um, the World Cup and uh, all kinds of stuff going on around the world Russia and the US meeting and all just all kinds of crazy stuff that at any moment of any day price can just react like crazy to things so we want to be aware of what's going on geopolitically and everything else in the world but um definitely some good stuff setting up for this week definitely interested in seeing what kind of trades we can get into but um this will cover what I'm watching guys I hope you enjoy these videos hope you get something out of it throw a comment um, if you want to see anything differently or if you want to just share a comment good or bad Everybody, this is your first video watching it. Appreciate you taking time to watch these. Anybody who has watched these before, thank you very much. I hope you're getting a lot out of these. Um, reach out to me if you guys have any questions or anything. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.